Good morning, evening, friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I got some serious news to pass on to everybody. And what I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster. It could turn the joy and laughter to tears and pain. Is that love? It's in me. Oh, love today. Don't delay. Send you in the right away. Hey, hey, hate going round is breaking many hearts. Stop it, please, before it's gone too far. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Do, 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 do. Mo, mo, mo. Okay, that's it. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, y'all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. I love that song. Y'all already know. I take so much flack for singing it. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about love. You know, we just want to talk about hate right now. Hate, 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 hate. <laughs> but no, y'all. You got to, you know, if it ain't no beauty, as Maurice said, you got to make some beauty. Have mercy. Listen to me, y'all. Um, But listen. First, I want to give a shout out um, to Brother Earl at Personality Plus. Um, and thank him for my wonderful t-shirt. I love it. What is it? Preacher, a prophet, a revolutionary, and a hero. Y'all know who that is? Ah. He's a real no-limit soldier, and his name is Nat Turner. <laughs> so, that's a t-shirt I'm rocking today. Nat Turner. And y'all saying? Yeah, he making an entrance. Anyway, I thought I'd share this with y'all because this information is so important all across the country. And I'm really, really proud of my city. I represent my city and I'm proud of my city for being one of the first uh, cities in the nation that I know of who has taken this approach to combating racial inequality. Okay, And I hope that it inspires other cities to do the same. Okay, racism is often viewed as an action performed by individuals. Okay, but even if we got rid of all America's prejudiced individuals, racism would still exist in the systems that they built. Systematic racism, writer Janae Desmond Harris explains, refers to how racial disparities operate in, a major, in major parts of U.S. society. The economy, the politics, the education, um, religion, sex, and war. We know what Dr. Francis Quest taught us. We already know. And the world is just catching up. But that's all right. That's all right. I thank God for our sister. I think the ancestor who's gone on, but who gave us this valuable knowledge. Um, because we are the compass for the world, whether we like it or not. And just like we gave everything else to the world, we, we have to bring, give civility back to the world. Racism, in other words, isn't just someone using a racial slur. It's also the poor schooling in predominantly black and brown neighborhoods, the racial wealth gap, housing discrimination, mass incarceration, police killings of unarmed black and brown people, higher infant mortality rates for people of color, and unequal access to health care. As governments struggle to address or even acknowledge that these racial inequalities 
uh, officials in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, decided to take up a unique approach by declaring racism a public health crisis. Y'all hear that? We in Milwaukee decided to declare racism a public health crisis. Milwaukee is one of the most racially unequal cities in the country. Coming in at number two last year on the list of the worst cities in America for black folk. Okay? By 24-7 Wall Street, a financial news uh, site. The report blamed Milwaukee's discriminatory housing policies throughout the 20th century for the city's current inequality. Citing research by the University of Wisconsin-Madison, it noted that 16 of 18 suburbs in Milwaukee County it, Milwaukee County enacted restrictive housing covenants in the 1940s, which remained in effect until the 60s and 70s. This segregation contributed to deep income and wealth inequality that you see prevalent today. Even now, the typical black household in Milwaukee earns less than half the typical white household. And while white poverty rate in Milwaukee of 7.6% is one of the lowest in the country, it reports. The black poverty rate of 36.4% is the highest. When it comes to imprisonment, the story is the same. Black people in Wisconsin are locked up at nearly 11 times the rate of whites, and more than half of Milwaukee's black people in their 30s have served time behind bars. In the end, where does all this lead? Across the state of Wisconsin, it means black people live about six years fewer than white people, with even greater disparities at the local level. By declaring such racism public health a crisis, Milwaukee County officials are committed to putting racial, inequality, putting racial equality at the core of all city procedures to advocate for policies that improve health in communities of color and to train their employees on how racism impacts residents. Finally, they hope to encourage other local, state, and national officials to recognize racism as a public health issue. We have a moral imperative to put our indifferences aside in the face of injustice. That's what Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley said and to ensure that every resident in every neighborhood benefits. Abley couldn't be more right. Like the late, great Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice, injustice everywhere. Black Americans deserve an end to racial inequality, but eradicating systematic racism will strike at the heart of inequalities that hold down Americans of all colors. The solutions can be complex, but bold ideas like Milwaukee's is a great start. Okay? And like I said, I want to give a shout out to Chris Abley, who I did vote for, uh, county exec. Um, and I know that he didn't, he came in with a, a lot of stuff, and him and Lena bumped head a few times. But at the end of the day, um, racism is a public health crisis. And if we have to lead the nation in declaring that, then let it be written and let it be done. Okay? I think about um, Glover, the slave that uh, came to Milwaukee, ran away, uh, well, was here. The story, I don't know if y'all know the story of, um, God, what is, uh, oh boy, I can't think of, um, y'all know how I do. Y'all know what happens when you hit menopause. <laughs> you don't remember every goddamn thing, but you try. But there's a story about the guy, um, who was a runaway slave, and he ended up in Milwaukee, or, um, and... Actually, we have a bridge or something named for him. And we helped him, um, you know, accomplish 
uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of freedom. His name was Donald Glover. That's what his name was. Donald Glover. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think I'm thinking about Danny Glover, y'all. But this is a real